Whether it was video game consoles or Pepsi, it seemed like everything turned clear in the 90s. Even gravy. Okay, we draw the line at gravy. Food flops aside, Y2K culture is roaring back, and that even includes a renewed interest in nostalgic tech, like this iconic phone. But it's 25 years old. It's iconic. But how did this look of translucent tech develop in the first place? There's a few theories, ranging from zero opacity preferences in prisons to longtime marketing ideas of purity and clarity. <laughs> Yikes. But the trend was undoubtedly everywhere. By the mid 90s and the end, especially as we were on the cusp of the new millennium and you think of Y2K, everything had to be clear or translucent and bright colors. And it wasn't just uh, a singular thing. It seems like it all happened at once where there were clear phones and clear answering machines, clear video game consoles. But let's jump back to the first clear examples of see-through technology in the 1930s. The New York World's Fair, its theme, the world of tomorrow. At the 1939 World's Fair, a number of wonders were introduced to the public, like GM's Futurama exhibit and a robot that smoked cigarettes. It also included the advent of acrylics like Lucite and Plexiglass. The now defunct electronics company, RCA, debuted its revolutionary television set. The TRK-12 Phantom Teleceiver was encased in clear lucite to demonstrate there was no trickery to their technology. And demonstrating its complexity allowed visitors to see why the machines would run someone $200 to $1,000, which is about $4,000 to $20,000 today. RCA wasn't the only one making use of transparent design. General Motors debuted the Pontiac Ghost Car with an all-plexiglass body, allowing visitors to admire the innovation firsthand. But when the U.S. joined World War II, commercial use of acrylics was largely put on hold and instead allocated toward aircraft construction. After the war, clear tech casings slowly re-emerged, but it didn't really start to revive until the 1980s in the form of telephones. Around 1989, Conair released its clear, light-up phone that became ubiquitous with the era. Selling two to three million that year, an avalanche of copycat phones followed. The internal neon palette also signified a shift beyond just showing that the phone worked. The mechanics were something to be celebrated and indicated a shift to a younger market. By the late 90s and early 2000s, Nintendo and Apple were in on the clear craze. Even though clear tech faded from popularity, there's no doubt it's on the path back. Xbox has semi-transparent controllers. There are even see-through earbuds, translucent cases. The trend cycle is coming back around. 90s nostalgia is sort of kicking in. And if you kind of look at history over the past hundred years, look through the decades, there tends to be this 30 year sliding scale when it comes to people being nostalgic about things. Think about the 80s, Back to the Future, 1985. Everyone was obsessed with the 50s, which was 30 years prior. This idea of the future is always tied to nostalgia. Clear tech has been a longtime design choice in sci-fi. When we think of a more perfect future, we'd be surprised to see how much of that vision comes from the past, who we were and who we want to be. In this case, we want to see that clearly and have some fun too. Like, how are you? Hey, how are you doing? Did Blockbuster close yet? I would just take all my calls on this now. It, yeah, I wasn't sure if my shirt was 280s or 90s. I don't know. You'll have to catch me on a landline. I would have to set that up. 